Hello, today is the 23rd of uh, July 2011, and I want to go over the uh, inverse and uh, regular ETFs, the extra leverage ETFs for silver, AGQ, and ZSL. Most of these ETFs, if not all of them, that are extra leveraged are meant to go to zero over the long run. And it, and it can take a long time, especially for the fund that's the most bullish. And the reason for this is because of the way they are moved on a day-by-day -day basis percentage-wise. Therefore, if there's a day where there's a 10% move in silver, let's assume it's up to 10% in one day, big day, you would expect the double fund, the AGQ, to gain 20%. And you'd oftentimes see the ZSL lose about 20%. But the problem with this is if a market goes from 100 and then goes up 20%, that would take it to 120. Yet if a market from 120 were to go down 20%, well, it would lose 24, which would take it below 100, meaning for every 10% up move is the same as 9.09% .09 down. Therefore, when you're having a day where you see one market's up 3.6 and the other one's down 3.63, not only was the negative higher than the positive, but it's supposed to be lower. But it's supposed to be, or maybe if it was not to go to zero, that's how it would be, but that's not how it is. Therefore, if you were to short each individual one, this is a ZSL on July the 30th, 2009, you short 369.60, you do it at the open, and the, you get out at the close, which is 368. You would have gained $1.60 on this one, small percentage gains. And on the AGQ, which is much higher than this now, when it opened at uh, $39, it closed at 39.17, you would have lost on this particular short. So let's assume this is something you're trying to do. You put half of your bankroll on one of the shorts, and you put the other half on another. Well, this is calculated how much each one of these would make. This one represents how much you would make on shorting the ZSL and how much you would make on shorting the AGQ. Most of the times it's going to result in higher trades. If you have a bankroll of $20,000 and it costs you absolutely nothing to make the trade, then this would be your chart. You'd have some small gains going up about 22.3%. However, there is obvious the commissions when we're dealing within these markets. A lot of times you'll talk about the, you'll hear Ameritrade or any of these other people talking about having maybe seven ninety nine trades or seven dollar trades for that matter. If it costs seven dollars per trade, it would really cost you four times per day. You'd have to have two entry points in the morning at 9.30 and then again at four. So that would work out to $28 a day. And now all of a sudden you have put yourself in a downtrend because you can't handle the trades. If the trades cost even the, the 9.99 that are so common then the downtrend would even continue. In fact, you're pretty much down to zero. And if you had the old standard $29.99 deals, well, you'd now be in the negatives, meaning you can't bet 20 cents when you're at 20 cents for a stock, yet you'd still be paying $30 a trade. It, it doesn't work out that way. However, if you had some larger fiat coin, let's assume a million dollars, and you were still paying $29.99, then the net result would be, well, you'd be losing. You'd still be down. You'd actually be down 47% right now by betting a, with a million dollars and then $30 a trade. Ouch. How about 19? Well, you'd still be down, down 22%. Okay, how about $9 a trade? Well, it looks, you can see a nice looking movement. It went up a bit, then it went down, and well, now it's starting to go back up a bit. You're up 1.49% right now. Still, that's, with a million dollars, I guess it's pretty hard to do. And I guess if you had maybe a hundred million dollars, 
with nine dollars a trade you'd be doing much much better yes by far much much better the commissions will hit you pretty big and this doesn't even count any of the bid ass any of the extra things and uh, so be it. However, with the large money, that's it can make you do pretty well. That's why I say that this game, this uh, what I call casino-style game, is for the high-stakes player. And I think this really emphasizes why this is to be the case. Now, overall, you're not making much per day. This is nickel and diming it because if you're making 22% a year, we'll just back it up to zero dollars a trade. Because at nine dollars a trade with 100 million, you make 22%. If you didn't have to uh, pay any rake, it would still be 22% because when you got $100 million, $9 means absolutely nothing. Therefore, 22% over two years, and this is how long it's been, that's like getting over 10% a year. So it's better than, than a bond or better than your standard interest. But if we look at uh, some of the gains, at least lately, I've only put up the last few, but I, we could even copy and paste some more. But this is how much it would be making each day. So on the Friday, you would have made 0.07. On the Thursday, you would have lost 0.02. To me, this tells you how much the ETFs lose per day, how much of it has declined. And some days, like this one here, it would get some back. But for the most part, you can see a lot of it is small gains. Now, the, June the 2nd was a big day. Of course, that was uh, – which day was that? Th this – was when the market went from 16.59 to 17.74. So there, it's higher volatile. The more volatile this is, the more this is going to happen. For this uh, minus six point, this is when it was up 6.93 percent and down 7.1 percent. Because you pretty much, when you're shorting these, you take the percentage moves, and if it's a negative, you stick a positive on it. If it's a positive, you stick a negative. Plain and simple. So I'm going to finish off just on that part there. I'm going to go to the financials too as well. There is a catch to these games. And that catch is if you run across a day where silver explodes, then that's going to change everything massive. Let's assume last Friday the silver market went up big, like unbelievable big. So instead of going from 213 to 215, Silver doubled in price, will state. So this should like quadruple or go up four times. So we'll assume that it goes up to say 800 and the high was 818. And if you have a situation for that, the short would just get uh, crushed. So if it's going up uh, 300%, then this one's going to lose about 80%. So it might even go down to like, say, we'll say two. 10 and it's probably even going to be higher than that but it's it's just to prove a point that this can really crush you and i'll show you what happens to your net result boom look at that you just got a crash you lost it all you lost everything in fact you're huge in the hole you're not might not negative 95 percent your value because you got to cover the shorts you got to cover these shorts that just got crushed in a short period of time when you uh, when you're shorting this at 1356 and covering at two, you're you're almost going to double your value. But when you're shorting at 213 and covering at 800, that's going to crush you. Now that's never happened as far as I know in a day that is. I did, however, thinking about this, maybe one of the days since the uh, FAZ and FAS came out, it has happened, and it hasn't. In fact. I have a $20,000 bankroll here, nothing for a trade, and the gains 183.95%. So there's a large amount of gains within it. Now this goes back to November 19th, 2008, and it's a triple leverage fund. In fact, if you only had $20,000 and you had to pay $9 a trade like at a lot of these firms, you would have still pulled up a 38% gain and you would have just been getting crushed from the early moments when the market was very volatile. If, uh, for example, we had that 100000 we were talking about before, you'd have a little bit more to play within it. Therefore, with 155% gain, you would have went up and then went sideways. So we'll just assume that you have a million dollars and you pay $5 a trade. 
because usually the more you got, the less you pay. You kind of wonder how much JP Morgan and all these other investment firms pay. I wouldn't be surprised if it's absolutely nothing. But I think then again, I don't know. We'll do the same thing here. Uh, first of all, we'll fix this up, though. Well, because this is, we'll just put a break-even day just to, because one day doesn't mean anything. I forget what the numbers were. Or the two days in a row, basically. It doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at one more thing, and that is how well your investments do compared to stocks, or these investments. The orange line represents making these wagers. Let's stick in $5 a trade in here because I did that for the other one. And a million dollars instead of a hundred million. We'll now move this on to the uh, chart again. Like you say, not nothing too big. Barely overperforming the, the stock market is. However, if we do the same thing, Well, the stock market in orange here, uh, not much of a similarity there, to say the least. And finally, two things. One, to protect yourself against those like major days, I guess, where markets go up big, and uh, you don't want to lose on the margin calls. Uh, once you're like down 10, 15%, maybe get out and get back in type thing. That's one way, and then... Again, the second thing, this is part of the derivative market, and in my opinion, and that's it, all it is, my opinion, calculated though, a ticking time bomb. Thank you for watching, and take care.